What's up guys, Penn Central 8505 here. Yes, I know, I took a long time to make this video, but it's finally here. This is the 500 subscriber special, and today we're gonna be taking a look at this layout. Um, so I got a lot to cover today. Um, we're gonna be going around the entire layout, through everything, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Sit back, relax, Maybe grab a snack and a drink. It's going to be a bit of a longer video. So with that, I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get right to it. This layout is a relatively large layout. It spans at its uh, longest points, 12 feet by 11 feet. Um, it sits about 35 inches off the floor and it is entirely fast track with the exception of the trolley line, which is tubular track. It consists of two main running loops with a yard and an extra side in. And it is a pretty decent layout. Um, this is about 10 years old. And yeah, it's a nice layout. I really like it a lot. Um, power for this layout comes from a ZW transformer for all the accessories, a KW transformer for the yard, a small Lionel hobby transformer for the um, trolley line, and then for the two... Uh, main lines, they were originally powered by Z1000 contro uh, controllers. Um, the outside loop is still a Z1000 controller, but um, we had to replace one because it started leaking uh, power and trains would, you know, they would start to run without, you know, having any power to put to them. So we replaced that with a Lionel transformer from around the uh, 90s to the early 2000s. Um, it was very common in a lot of starter sets. Our tour starts here at this little station platform between the two main lines. It sits right behind our one 072 switch and beside it is a old metal semaphore that is manually operated. And on the other side is a sensor for the inside loop. Behind us, we have a chassis system uh, work train pass by as we wait for our train. And as we see here, our train arrives and we are ready to board and continue on our journey around the layout. Our train's ready to go. With the two blasts of the whistle, we head north around the first turn and our first point of interest. This area of the layout has seen the least amount of change over the years. A small house overlooks the tracks as a milk train runs by. Three billboards advertising different companies, a lot of wildlife around. A man runs alongside the tracks carrying an old Lego sword, and a helicopter sits, having seen better days, and the water tower towers above everything. The next part is the hill, where our train goes up and gives some elevation to our layout. Our train passes by, speeding up the hill and rounding the bend. And later on, a small freight train passes by behind the yard. We'll take a look at the yard later, and we'll continue on down the main line. At the northwest corner of the layout sits the mountain, and our first of two bridges. Below, the M10005 speeds by, right past James Bond's uh, Lotus Esprit. Above, we have the mountain and an old tunnel with some dwarves standing on some old railroad tracks. Beside them is my lineup of Sonic figures, 
and above, at the top of the mountain, is a radio tower where an old man sits and meditates. Moving down the line, we see a uh, part of the layout that should be very familiar to longtime viewers of the channel, the Big Lionel Bridge. Our train passes over the bridge, while a GP9 crawls carrying a shipment of automobiles. This area kind of acts as a focal point, having the big bridge there with lights on it and the big Lionel logo. This bridge spans the access hole that we have to access the window or to the rear of the layout, and the lower loop of track goes around it. And by the lower loop, there is a small station platform with some campers having a campfire. Over in the southwest corner of the layout, we see another site that should be very familiar to longtime viewers of the channel. The Sunoco sign gleams while our train speeds by, and below, a mail train speeds along. A house sits, and nearby, a station where some characters of the Polar Express wait for December so they can make their next run on the Polar Express. Our train passes by what's probably the busiest uh, building in the entire layout, and that is the main train station. This is a amalgamation of a few different buildings all bunched together to make one big scene. It has a Lionel uh, kit station, two modern era station platforms built by Lionel, and an animated uh, freight station. The figures are a mix of a bunch of different figures, old Lionel figures, homies, and a bunch of other things too. And yeah, it makes for a pretty busy scene on this layout. And as we'll see as well, this station doesn't just serve passengers, it also serves freight. At the end there is the switch tower, and some men are getting some cargo ready to be loaded onto the next train. As we'll pass by here, a band plays for a small crowd of people. Behind the station lies a little uh, freight station, and a Susquehanna RMT beep backs in with a boxcar ready to be loaded up. Starting on the south end of the layout, we have a apartment building that is scratch built by my grandfather and a MTH animated car wash. A man goes to pay for his car wash while two trains pass by. The building on the far end is, again, like I said, scratch built, made almost entirely out of wood. And fun fact, on the side of the building, there are some advertisements reminiscent of a real building in my town. Next to the freight station, we have the newsstand, which kind of acts as a part of a little square, which here we also have a clock tower, a flagpole that's just out of view of the camera, and a bench for people to sit. Across the street, we have the SO gas station with a couple of cool cars parked up next to, to the place. We also have the local diner, which seems very busy tonight. A plumbing shop with men hard at work getting stuff organized. And a hot rod shop named after me. Next to there, the Joker's on the run again, but not to worry, Batman and a bunch of others are going after him as they speed past the bank, the hospital, and the Ford dealership. Here we see the yard's milk platform as we wait for the milk train that we saw earlier to pull in. The train pulls in, and the man in the first refrigerator car starts putting the cans onto the platform. The first car is empty. The engineer moves the train up so then the man in the second car can start emptying his car.
After the car is empty, the engineer moves his train so then another train can make a delivery. The next train drops off a cattle car at the livestock yard to uh, eventually move those cows to another farm. The livestock car is uncoupled and the engineer moves the flat car up so then it can be unloaded where the logs will be cut into lumber at the sawmill. Another engine moves in gondolas to be filled with barrels. The man on the barrel cart works diligently as the engineer adjusts the gondolas so then the barrels fall in nicely and evenly. The engineer now moves the gondolas up so then the other gondola can be filled at the other barrel loader. Like at the last barrel loader, the engineer will adjust the gondola as needed so then the barrels fall in evenly. After the gondolas are filled, he moves the train and it's on its way to wherever it needs to go. Over by the coal tower, a Union Pacific Alco moves a couple of hoppers, so then a Monon engine can bring in a dump car to be unloaded. Later, we see the hoppers get returned to the coal tower while the crane loads up some scrap metal onto the awaiting gondolas. Here, we see a Commodore Vanderbilt back up to get filled with water, while the culvert loader gets jammed. A repairman inspects the oil derrick on the right, because the weight is loose. An Illinois Central F3 approaches to get refueled after dropping off some freight cars. Later on, a southern Mikado backs in to take water after a long journey. The wind must be heavy today because the door to the outhouse can't stay closed. At the east end of the yard, we see the largest light tower that keeps the entire yard illuminated. We also see a water tower and another light tower that has been decommissioned. As we'll see in a second, two very peculiar trains will pass by.
And there you have it, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I want to thank each and every one of you who is subscribed. You guys are amazing. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. You guys are awesome. Thanks again, guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And this is going to be Penn Central 805 out.